Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you are doing great. We're gonna to talk today about a concept that not a lot of people understand or are talking about, but I believe that it has been happening massively in the last couple of years, ever since everything shut down in 2020, and that is the concept of quiet quitting. All right. Now, if you have never heard of quiet quitting, I want to explain uh, first what it is and how it could actually benefit you. Uh, I believe that the culture, the hustle culture is completely changing uh, every day. It is getting uh, bigger and bigger, this movement. And uh, quite frankly, I believe it's going to lead to lots of opportunities. All right. And this is exactly why I made that course on how to start a side hustle and why it's so darn important. And just so you guys know, I just now came out with another lesson for that course. That course will continue. Um, this is the introductory price. It'll continue going up in price. It hasn't gone up in price yet, but as I put out more lessons, but it's, I'm going to keep putting in lessons. So if you want to lock it in now, cool, no worries. Quiet quitting. What is it? This is very important. So first, before I say quiet quitting, I want to talk about the hustle culture because that's what used to be in the uh, 90s the early 2000s and even after the great recession we had a culture of hustling crushing it making sure that we were going over and above what we um were ex what was expected at work right because people wanted to climb the corporate ladder because they wanted a couple of different things they wanted more say in the operations to also give them a sell a sense of confidence and then they also wanted to have more money uh more uh uh, options when it came to, you know, uh, better insurance plans, things like that, uh, va paid vacation, things like that. And that's what the hustle culture really taught was get to work early, leave, be the last one to leave, be constantly impressing your boss, your supervisors so that you can get that next promotion and get out there and absolutely crush it. The problem is now we are seeing, and I, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think it's a problem. And I'm going to explain some parts about my life when I started quietly quitting in a job that I was in, okay? But now people are, what's happening is ever since everything shut down, people started to really realize that there was more to life than making an extra dollar or making, you know, getting that, uh, you know, the raise or getting, you know, a little bit more admiration from your supervisors or moving up the ranks. What they found is that they really truly missed time with their family. And for a short brief time, because the government intervened and gave a lot of people money to stay home, right? They figured out that, oh my gosh, this is what I've been missing. I've been missing the freedom of being able to make my own schedule, the freedom to be able to see my family or or my friends when I want to. Uh, you know, it sounds crazy, even in a time where everything was shut down, that didn't stop a lot of people. They they went out and they, they saw their friends, they saw their family, they spent time with their immediate family. They got back to their roots. And, and that was very, very important for people. So people started in droves, not going back to work. And we had what's called the great resignation. It was all over the news. Now, the thing about the great resignation and how it plays into the silent, quiet quitting, I believe this is the second phase, the second phase of the great resignation. The reason why I say that is because there are a lot of people that want more freedom. They want to make more money. They want to be able to call their own shots. They just don't know how to do it. And it's hard for them to leave their current job because they are stuck in a rut when it comes to needing health insurance. Uh, they're, they're, they love their paid vacation and they're having a hard time leaving. So... I'm gonna give you some suggestions. I gotta be honest with you, and then I'm gonna use an example of how I did it a long time ago and how I bought my first house. So what is quiet quitting? Quiet quitting is now deciding that, you know, I don't need to get to work 20 minutes early and I don't need to stay 20 minutes after. If I have to start at 8 a.m., I'll be there at one minute before eight and I'll clock in. Um, if I'm off at 5 p.m., I walk out the door at 5 p.m. Uh, it's knowing there's people, and I've seen it before, a lot of companies, it's like you bring up a great idea that could save the company money or um, what is it? Uh, just make the company run better. And then you're the one that's tasked with it, right? Rather than, you know, you go to your supervisor, I've got this great idea and you may not be the perfect one to implement it. There may be somebody that runs out there and has really the, the wherewithal to be able to pull it off and do it and, you know, implement it. And you might just have the idea and you're always the one, okay, good. You do it. And you're like, Crap. all right, look, I just wanted to bring you the good idea. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of times employees have learned like, why am I bringing these good ideas? I'm just going to get tasked with the extra work, save them a bunch of money and I don't get anything for it. Right? So what's happening is you're seeing people pulling that back and going, well, wait a minute, if I have all these good ideas, why don't I start a consulting business? That might be, I've seen people do that. And they actually <laughs> quit their job and went to work as a consultant, making more money for the company they quit. Real true story. Um, but you have people start to do that, right? Supervisors should be in a position where they go, that is a great idea. Would you like to do it? And, and feel that there's no repercussion or anything that would come back bad 
you know, honestly, I don't want to do it. I just thought, <coughs> excuse me, that it would be a perfect idea for somebody, right? And then the supervisor being a real leader goes, this is a great idea. Would anyone else like to take this on and let the person with the hustle culture go <coughs> pull it up? Or truly someone that goes, man, I'm bored with my work. I think that would be exciting. I'd love to do it. Well, bosses don't do that. Why? Because they're bosses. They just boss you around. Leaders are the ones that go, let's take this great idea. If you don't want to do it, let's, let's see if somebody wants to do it, you know, or I'll do it because I'm the leader and I get paid for that. Point being is that people are starting to figure out, why am I showing up early, leaving late? Why am I busting my butt on, on the weekends when I'm off? A lot of people take phone calls when they're off and it's their day off, but it's like, oh, if I don't do it, you know, what's the boss going to do? And there are a lot of people that decide enough's enough. And what they're doing is they're starting side hustles. They're starting and they're going, you know what? My day off is for me. And if I want to achieve uh, something great, um, I'm going to do it on my day off, or I'm going to do it in the 15 minutes or the hour early that I showed up to work. I'm not, I'm not going to show up to work early anymore. They pay me for this job for these hours. This is what I'm going to get paid. And I think honestly, that is what's really exciting and why I wanted to build that course, because a lot of people just don't know where to start. And it sounds funny. And I'm going to give you now my story, of how I started. Uh, when I bought my first house, now I'd already been a real estate, I'm uh, not a real estate agent, but I was already into stocks. I was a stock investor in the, the dot-com boom in 1998. And I was really excited. But by the year 2000, uh, 2000, I wanted to buy a house. I had just gotten married. I wanted to start a family and lay down some roots. And I didn't have any extra money. Uh, the money that I made for my career at that time, full-time career, only made uh, my bills. And so I needed more to be able to buy a house and put down down payment. And at my job, we had uh, this period where we got paid a certain amount of hours to work. But inside that out, those hours, we had downtime and they paid us for standby time. And all we had to do was answer a phone and the phone calls did not come in very often. And a lot of people that would uh, do the, this job, the standby time, would use it to play video games, read books, you know, like uh, fiction books, right? And, um, you know, just sort of a appease their mind. And what I decided was I said, look, I had a hobby and uh, I, I, I always grew up loving these little electric trains. And I had an opportunity once where I came across a sale and found a bunch of them. You know, I couldn't afford them at the time for 50% off. And I go, man, what if I took these and I started selling them on eBay? And I started doing that. Well, I was doing it on my days off, but I figured out, man, I could use my standby time at work and just, I would pre-take all the photos. And then while I'm waiting for a phone call, so I could put, I'm essentially like an operator, fancy telephone operator. I'll just use that time to bring my own computer and I'll list these things for sale on eBay. And it worked out great. For two years, I had all this standby time where I was being paid at work, just sit there and answer the phone. So instead of playing video games or doing something mediocre with my time, I used, and I was, I said, I was silent quitting. I'm going, you know, why would I do anything extra? I'm being paid to do this mediocre job and I can get this and my side hustle done at the exact same time. And none of my supervisors obviously had an issue with it because to them, it just looked like when they walked by, I was playing video games. So my point being is that I took that time and I started to silently quit because I was in a job where I was told, hey, you're never going to promote if you don't do this, this, and this. And I'm like, look, I don't think that's right to have to kiss somebody's butt. Um, and I'm literally, that was what I was told. The reason why you're not getting... Uh, promoted is because you're not kissing someone's butt. I'm not joking. I'm not about that. And I said, but I do my job well. I get performance appraisals that are stellar. This one person actually gets bad performance appraisals and you you like him more. It's all because he makes the boss feel good about himself. I said, this is not for me. So what I did is I earned uh, $20,000 in my side hustle while being on my standby job, and um, which was way more than each year. It, you know, think about this. The, the promotion I wanted was only worth about $5,000 extra for the entire year. And here I made like $20,000 in my first year, year or so, selling these electric trains. And I was able to go out and take that and buy my first house. Well, then instead of selling trains on my downtime, you know, with my reserve time at work, I was now flipping homes because I started buying rentals and flipping homes. So I was able to make cell phone call or phone calls to my real estate agent or, you know, read books on the matter. And so I was getting paid to silently quit my job. And, and, to this day, I look back and I go, it was the best thing I ever did to stop breaking my back or my neck uh, for somebody that doesn't care. All they want to be done is have their butt kissed. And I started making wealth over and over and over to the point now to where um, my additional money is equal to uh, 10 times more than my annual pay at that old job. And that's just revenue that comes in. And that's what it all started with was silent quitting. It's that mindset of, you know what? There's something bigger out there. Why am I busting my butt for a company that at any point could lay me off because 
um, of these new rules or new technology that's coming out. Why don't I just do the bare minimum and start to work on the side for uh, what I want, how to, to achieve my dreams. So guys, if you are interested in checking out that course, take a look, I'm gonna put it in the comment section below. Uh, introductory price is 199, so depending on when you see this video, it might be up from there. But I'm gonna keep raising prices over the years, uh, over the months, as we put more content in there. But I wanted to bring you guys value, and this is right now just the basics of how to start a, uh, how to start a side hustle how to identify what kind of side hustle to do and then slowly bring it up to where it turns into a corporation and uh, from you know basic to more advanced guys thank you so much for watching i really appreciate you watching put down in the comment section what kind of side hustle you've always wanted to start or what you have going and what's been working for you or what hasn't been i really appreciate your feedback all right guys that being said the economic ninja is out <laughs>